So thinking aloud this week is spending, and specifically spending cuts. The Chancellor, or at George underscore Osborne, as he is known to his friends, has done what he does so often. He's plucked a figure from the air, and this time it is 11.5. 11.5 billion pounds of spending cuts that he's lopped off the branches of government. Now, at the moment, that may just feel like figures, but ultimately it will have an impact on the services that till now we have enjoyed. I have set myself a task much harder than George Osborne's, which is to try to forge some sort of an agreement uh, between <laughs> Owen Jones, who writes for The Independent, and Harry Cole for The Spectator and the Guido Fawkes website. Let me ask both of you to start with. George Osborne, um, Owen, looked fairly chipper after a bad news statement yesterday. Uh, does he have any right to? No, absolutely not. This should be called the comprehensive re review of the failure of austerity <laughs> because this sort of statement should never have actually happened. The Tory pledge, of course, before the last election was to clear the deficit by over the course of this parliament, which they failed to do. That's because everything the so-called deficit deniers predicted would happen has come to pass by sucking demand and growth out of the economy. Uh, so we now still have a smaller uh, economy than before Lehman Brothers came crashing down. That leaves us in the longest economic crisis on record, longer even than the Great Depression. Because tax revenues have been lower than projected, that means borrowing is much higher than they estimated. They're, they're actually borrowing 245 billion extra than they actually thought they would. That is just showing we, we've ended up in this situation because of that failure of austerity. Now the answer is even more. Harry, you had a bit of an Ed Ball's <laughs> gesture there <laughs> yeah. as you were listening. Well, let's just put this, this whole idea of austerity into, into a, bit of a bit of context. George Osborne pledged that in 2015 and 2016 the country will be spending something like £745 billion. That's still going to be 44% of British GDP. It's hardly austerity when the government is still overspending and will be spending more at the end of this parliament than it was at the beginning of, the, beginning of this parliament. But there is a paradox, isn't there, that... It hasn't worked out as he planned, and yet he's no, I don't, fairly I, no, comfortable. No, of course. I mean, the, the size of the task uh, that was put to the coalition government after the, the, in the wake of the, lab, the last Labour administration was huge. I think they did overpromise a little bit to begin with, um, but at the end of the day, I don't think they're going far enough. Well, if you actually the, the tinkering around the, the seams of this, the debt is continuing to go up, the deficit isn't going down, but we're having to borrow more and cut simply salami slicing 11.5 billion off the top of it is is, is absurd. We should be taking out think? whole government departments. What do you not? Things would happen cut the top of Owen Jones, if we did go further, if we followed the coal prescription. Well, well uh, it would be uh, an incredible little experiment, wouldn't it, Harry? I think given that already these huge cuts that we have had, 10% on average department, departmental cuts, uh, with some departments, of course, even greater, that we've ended up in a situation where we're in the longest economic crisis in modern yes. times, where we've ended up, because we've sucked demand out the economy, I'm going to quote a bastion of socialism, <laughs> the Standard & Poor Credit Agency, because when <laughs> they cut the credit rating of eight EU countries, they said fiscal austerity was self-defeating because it sucked demand out the economy, tax revenues were lower, people didn't spend money, so if we had more of the same, okay, we'd just be ending up with talking, more talking, borrowing, talking, less tax talking, revenues. You're talking of quoting socialists, let's go back and look at uh, the last time there was a major, major cuts to the government. Dennis Healy, in the same, in one year, cut more than George Osborne is cutting across this entire parliament and planning to cut across the next well, with the election. I mean, you're talking about these, these, these swinging cuts. They're actually pretty minor in comparison. And I don't think you should be afraid Do you know how swinging they are? Let's just put, actually pull it into context. We will end up, by the end of this, with lower spending as a proportion of our GDP that's than the United States of America. That's a good but thing. Free market, how can, how can you say that's a bad thing? For free market ideologues like yourself, you want to roll back the state, you want to use a financial... I want to roll back the state, I want to, Look, make, I want to make the economy... Work to use like a financial crisis Look, to I'm roll back the state, I'm that's I'm a good thing. I'm not surprised that you would have widely different views, <laughs> shall we say. <laughs> what is quite striking at the moment is that there is perhaps a developing consensus mm between the governing parties and Labour. Do you agree with that? Uh? Well, yes, and shamefully so. Labour's failing to do their job, which is to present a coherent alternative to a disastrous policy. I'll give you one example, one example which I think is really stuck in my call this morning. Now, the Tories are now proposing that uh, benefit claimants, people who've just lost their jobs, will have to wait an additional seven days before they can claim benefits. Bear to, in to, mind... To, find, to, to allow them time uh, to find but, a job. Well, bear in mind, already the average wait is already over three weeks. What that means in practice of people who've paid in, they've paid into national insurance, they won't get anything back, uh, maybe for up to a month now, all that will mean that at the moment there'll be a lot of grinning 
uh, loan sharks in this country, <laughs> food banks which are already exploding. We've got half it a million people dependent on food banks. You at the picked moment. up on one area yeah. where Ed Balls is not rowing back. He's saying, OK. I thought it was, it was quite vast, striking vast, in the chamber yeah. of the House of Commons that when George Osborne got onto what is potentially dangerous territory for Labour, which is welfare, mm. the Labour backbenchers have clearly been told, shut up, Labour, don't have a go at him. Labour are waking up to, to reality and they're looking at the opinion polls and they're looking at the, the state of the country and they're looking at where, where the people believe these, these cuts and where the squeeze should be put. And hard-working people who pay their taxes do believe that, that, that it is unfair. Not, we, can get into, we can get into the nitty-gritty of it uh, at time, but you can't deny that it, 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 it is popular stuff. Oh, there's no question and whatsoever. Labour, that Labour that are waking up to reality that if they want a, a fighting chance in this election, they've got to accept that they, uh, they, some, some proportion of the blame for what happened. They've got to accept that some proportion of the blame for the culture of, of, of dependency that they created. And, you know, no offence to Owen, he does represent a, a pretty minor fringe of so opinion. It's not a minor fringe. And, 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 and the, ma the, ma the major parties well, are reflect now, now now reflecting the That's not public. The public aren't, you, that's not aren't you on the wrong side of the popular argument? Well, uh, there was an interesting poll which was done earlier this year which showed the more people knew about the reality of what Social Security is, who gets benefits, how much they're worth, f they were far less likely to support the government's programme. Unfortunately, we haven't seen, and the Labour leadership bears responsibility this, we're actually telling the truth, and this is the reality. The majority of Social Security spent on elderly people, quite rightly, people who've paid in all their lives and get something back and they deserve a good retirement, many of them are still denied that. Of working age people who get benefits, the majority of them are in work. Now if Labour want to be serious, if Labour want to be serious about reducing Social Security as we all do, that means addressing the underlying things that are driving Social Security, such as low wages, we're subsidising low pay with tax credits, if you have a living wage you'll bring that down, okay. and housing benefit, let councils well, build housing fairness, and that will bring down like. housing benefit. This is the fairness agenda. Do you feel that the right people are being clobbered? No, the people that are being clobbered right now are, are, are our next generation, our children and their children. You know, the people that are alive at the moment should be the ones picking up this tap. You know, the, 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 we need to do, we need to start to start addressing our national debt Your so that we far so far that we are just is, palming it off on, people, onto our people, children. People. It's completely unfair people. to expect our, well, our kids well, to pick up the tap well, for our for our debt. Well, you, well they are because 1.1 million children are being forced into poverty over the course of this parliament. So yes, they are. And secondly, we're going through the biggest squeeze in the workers' pay packets since records began. What this will also mean for the first time since World War II is the next generation will be poorer than the last. They are being saddled with debt, it's called the trebling of tuition fees. Oh, they were also, on, absolutely, on. and also there's a huge housing crisis and that's, as I say, we talk about housing benefit, subsidising private landlords charging extortionate rents. Do what Boris Johnson, that well-known lefty, has suggested. <laughs> Let councils borrow in order to build. Uh, take it Do off. What? Should we feel sorry for councils? Because they're, they're getting really... Their budgets have already been slashed. Slashed again. And then George Osborne says... Lucky you. I'm giving you enough money that you can freeze the council tax. I, I, they're really I, I think that the, the, the size of the cuts in the Department of Local Government show the, the, uh, the amount of uh, excess and waste there was there over the oh, years that God. can be trimmed away. The fact, that the, the fact that the streets are still being cleaned and local services are still being provided and they've managed to, to accept these cuts shows exactly the situation that, we were in before. Fair? No, it isn't. Oh, well, no, unsurprisingly not. <laughs> what it means is youth services being shut down, leaving lots of uh, very bored young people on our streets. It means services for elderly people, uh, care services being slashed which put more pressure on our already squeezed National Health Service. It means uh, council tax benefit being slashed for low paid workers and unemployed people and it means for example uh, charities which are supported but, by look, local councils helping victims of domestic violence are having to turn women away. That's already the reality and that's going to get a well, lot look, worse. As you would expect from way. three serious sober chaps <laughs> like us we've been discussing serious issues but you know what they're talking about on Twitter this morning, <laughs> the day after the spending review? These are the Issues. They are talking about on the George Osborne Twitter feed this photo. <laughs> a complete obsession <laughs> with his burger. Byron Burger, not I, McBurger. I, I feel slightly responsible. I feel, I feel a little bit mean towards George Osborne. I, I saw, I saw really that. I saw that, I saw that and I did that actually recognise the chips and I said that's a Byron Burger <laughs> to my money. And then uh, I'd imagine the one the one the one newspaper headline that the uh, the Chancellor didn't appreciate this morning was the was the sun. But you know, this is all about the the image makers and the rest of it. We look at George Osborne tweeting this out on, well, it wasn't last night, it was the night before. Yeah. 
Does he have to do this? No, I mean, what he was trying to do was go, look, I'm just like you. I'm like the man on the street. We've all had to work to late deadline, <laughs> stop at ourselves for burgers. And the reality is I almost felt a bit sorry for him, would you believe? I'm the last person on earth you'd probably expect to say that. But I thought, oh, come on, the sun's just trying to, you know, yeah. it's the front page, they're trying to, it's a shot across the bow, it was over a very small issue. But if you're going to try and posture as a man of the people, you're asking for trouble. I don't know. I think there's an element to, there is a definite element to intrigue about our politicians. And the Chancellor has been seen in the over the last couple of years is quite aloof. There's been a deliberate move mm. by his people to try and make him a little bit more human. He often avoided the TV cameras, whereas now he's put out there a lot more. And his whole new Twitter feed is meant to be, you know, lifting the curtain Humanizing a little bit, it. showing, showing him as a, as a normal person rather than just as wielding axe man. <laughs> um, however, it becomes counterproductive then when you know the, it, it starts to distract from the bigger issues. I know. I mean, I. I work in, in, on a, for a political gossip website, and even I could see that there could maybe be a few other things we could be talking about from that. Is it hilarious, though? Yes, it is. Well, <laughs> thank you to both of you. I think I can see that George Osborne will probably be giving you a call to be his... Uh, <laughs> maybe buy me a burger, yeah. His new spin doctor with, uh, with your advice, your advice, media yeah. advice. I think yeah. I'd politely decline I appreciate job, it. Thank you. Uh, next week, I'm sure we'll have an equally uh, stimulating discussion. We're probably going to be talking about the NHS. It's actually the anniversary of the NHS, but I think that what's fascinating at the moment is the way the whole dialogue surrounding the NHS feels like it's shifting as, and a critique and criticism uh, is coming to the fore in a way it hasn't for years and as part of that we're going to see the heads of the Care Quality Commission up at the Health uh, Committee for what we traditionally call a grilling.